Hello and welcome to Form Fundamentals. My name is Dr. Katie Ailes and I am part of the team here at I Am Loud Productions. If you're interested in learning about poetic form, what it is, why we use it, and how you can make it work for you, you are in the right place. This is the first episode in season two of our Return to Form series, which celebrates poetic form and shows how contemporary writers can use form in new and interesting ways. Big thanks to National Lottery Funding through Creative Scotland for making this project possible. You can watch all of the videos in the Return to Form project through the playlist linked up in the eye. This season we'll be featuring eight poetic forms from the contrapuntal to the villanelle. We'll be sharing brand new work from contemporary UK poets in each form. Plus, I'll be giving accompanying workshops in each form showing you how to write in it yourself. And we're kicking off this season with these new Form Fundamentals videos, introducing you to the basics of poetic form. This episode covers the essentials, what and why form, and the next three videos will go through structure, rhyme, and meter. In this episode, I will define poetic form and list some of the common categories of form. I'll tell you all about why I think learning about form and writing in form is a great way to spice up your writing practice. I'll introduce you to the example poem we'll be using throughout this series. And finally, I'll teach you my favorite poetry drafting techniques, which we're going to use in my upcoming workshops. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, what is poetic form? Broadly speaking, it means the techniques used to craft a poem structure, rhyme, meter, etc. When we talk about writing in a specific poetic form, we mean using an established poem structure with its own rules and traditions, like writing a haiku or a limerick. There are so many poetic forms in different styles with different requirements from literary cultures around the globe. There are classical forms with requirements for rhyme, structure, and or meter, like the Shakespearean sonnet we covered last season, and the Terza Rima, Villanelle, and Standard Habi that we're going to talk about this season. There are forms which play with repetition and remixing of words and lines, like the Sestina, Palindrome, and Contrapuntal poems. There are forms which require you to start with existing text and then make something new from it, like found poetry, including erasure poetry, and the golden shovel. And there are so, so many more. Visual forms like concrete poetry, collaborative forms like the renga, linguistically limiting forms like univocal poetry, the list goes on. Some of these forms are very, very old, while some are incredibly new. So if your idea of poetic form is something dusty and archaic that no one's used since Shakespeare, think again. Okay, so that's what poetic form means and some examples of forms. Why learn about it? This may seem counterintuitive to say in a series all about poetic form, but it's really important. You can have a fantastic career as a writer, write beautiful poetry, get so much enjoyment from your craft without having any clue what trochaic hexameter means. There is no entrance exam to poetry, no requirement to learn all the jargon, no need to be fluent in every single poetic form. All you need to be a poet is your voice and the creativity and confidence to use it. In that regard, at least, poetry is an accessible art form, and it is so important that it remain that way. Now, your fingers may be twitching to switch the video as you think, well, then why the heck should I learn all this stuff? Don't change the channel yet. Hear me out. As I said, you don't need to know poetic form. You don't need to know all of the terminology. But having an understanding of poetic form and knowing how to use it can vastly enhance your poetic craft and it can really elevate your writing to the next level. For one, form is a fantastic vehicle for experimentation. If you've been writing, say, in free form for years, you may be comfortable in it, you may even feel that you've mastered it, but you might also feel that you've exhausted its possibilities for you. Trying out a sestina or a palindrome poem is a great way of stretching out those noggin muscles and expanding your creative horizons. It's that great paradox of making art. 
Sometimes restricting your creativity into a specific poetic form is actually a way of widening your practice, of giving your creativity an additional channel to flow through. For another reason, it's very, very likely that you're already using form in your work, even if you don't know what the technical term for what you're doing is. Naming and understanding the concept, design, and tradition of these techniques will help you to do them better. And it might give you an ego boost. Hey, you're probably using the same strategies as Plath and Neruda. Even if you're not interested in writing in poetic form, I think there's still something really valuable about learning it. As you watch these Form Fundamentals videos, you might learn all about meter and then go, nope, never writing an iambic pentameter, no siree, thank you. But your new understanding of the breadth of a line, of the impact of changing the stresses in strategic places, all of that filters through into your practice, even if you're just then continuing to write freeform without a set meter. Similarly, you might never write in fixed rhyme schemes, A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D. I rarely do. But through learning about the traditions of poetic rhyme, you'll come away with a greater understanding of internal rhyme, of half rhyme, of assonance and consonance and how they work. And all of that will filter through to make your writing better no matter what style you're interested in pursuing. My point here is that learning about form doesn't mean that your entire creative practice has to change. Only tears a rima from here on out. Understanding form simply means that you have more tools in your toolbox for whatever you want to write next. And remember, as you write through the workshops in this series, and indeed any time you write a poem in a set form, obviously give that poem a fighting chance, but if it is just not working in, say, standard habi, there are no poetry police holding a sword to your neck saying, you must finish this poem in standard habi or death! You can always switch a poem that's not working in a particular form to free form, recycle the language into a new poem, try a new form. It's your writing. It is your choice. You can also choose to adhere to only part of an established poetic form. For instance, you could write a poem in Terza Rima, which uses the interwoven rhyme scheme and the tercet structure, but doesn't use iambic pentameter. Pick and choose what works for you. My golden rule of poetic form is this. You are not there to serve, to obey poetic form. It is there to serve you. It is a set of helpful tools, not a wall to bang your head against. All right, moving on. I always think that the best way of understanding poetic form is through examples, through reading and hearing poetry. So all throughout this Form Fundamentals series, I'm going to be showing you all of the concepts that I go through on the same poem. The poem that we're using is Callum O'Dwyer's wonderful Shakespearean sonnet, The Kiss, which he wrote for the first season of Return to Form. You can watch the full video of both Callum's and Hannah Lavery's gorgeous sonnets linked up in the eye. This this poem is a brilliant example of the contemporary use of poetic form. It adheres precisely to all the rules of the Shakespearean sonnet, stanza structure, rhyme scheme, meter, and volta, but it doesn't use archaic language and is written in Callum's own voice. Throughout Form Fundamentals, I'll show you how this poem uses many great formal techniques, from assonance to enjambment to iams, so that you can understand them and be equipped to use them in your own writing. All right, time for my final guidance. I think one of the biggest tripping points, one of the biggest barriers that people face when writing poetry in established forms is that it's so easy with all the bells and whistles, all the meter and rhyme and all of the jargon. With all that, it's really easy to forget that really at its heart, what you're doing is writing a poem. Whether it's a palindrome poem, a renga, or a piece of free verse, poetry in and out of form is about expressing yourself and being creative and playful with language. And to that end, there are some fundamental writing exercises and techniques that I always use and that I find really helpful no matter what form I'm writing in. Throughout the workshops and the Return to Form series, I'll take you step by step through how to write in each of the featured poetic forms and I'll often ask you to free write and to pan for gold. Briefly now, I'm going to describe what I 
mean by that so that you can add those skills to your toolbox if you don't have them already. I'll be showing you these techniques on paper, but of course you can also use a computer. Just use whatever feels most comfortable to you. First, free writing. This is a fantastic way of getting words on the page quickly, and it's usually the first thing I do when I sit down to write a poem in any form. Here's how to do it. First, open a blank page in your notebook or on your computer. Then set a timer for five minutes and write. You can free write on a theme if you have an idea in mind or just write about whatever pops into your head. This is stream of conscious raw words, not crafted poetry. You should banish the critic from your shoulder. They can come back down later when you're editing, but right now your only job is to get down words. And if you don't know what to write, if you're feeling stuck, write anything. Write down your own name. Write down what you had for breakfast. Anything. Just keep the pen moving for five minutes. I love free writing because it gets the creative juices flowing and it smashes the blank page. Even if what you've just written down is utter gibberish, hey, you've written something. And more often than not, it isn't all gibberish. There are probably some shiny nuggets in there which might spark into poetry. That brings me to the other exercise we'll be using in this series, panning for gold. Panning for gold means going back through drafted material with a keener eye and looking for words, phrases, lines, images, ideas that have potential anything that could possibly be expanded into a poem or could maybe form part of a poem. So after you've done your free write, pick up a highlighter and read through what you wrote again. Be like a magpie looking for something shiny in the grass. You're not looking for complete beautiful lines of poetry here. It might just be a single word, a single idea. Highlight anything that you want to save from that free write and continue playing with. Then, Start a new page and copy that idea to the top of the page. If you want, you can now repeat the process, but in a more focused way. Free write about that specific golden nugget, then pan for gold again. Or you can jump right into writing a poem, whatever your creativity is driving with. Panning for gold is a great way of finding and then winnowing down ideas, taking the stream of consciousness chaotic jumble of a free write and picking out threads that you might then be able to weave into a new poem. Ooh, that's a mixed metaphor. Ha! With these two basic skills in your toolbox, you are all set to write poetry in form and out of it. You got this. And that's it for this first episode of Form Fundamentals. I really hope that this was helpful for you in understanding how to think of and how to use poetic form. If you have any questions after watching this video, please pop them in the comments below. I am more than happy to help. And stay tuned, this season of Return to Form is just getting started. Our second episode of Form Fundamentals is coming out shortly, going over poetic structure lines and stanzas and enjambment, oh my! If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that bell icon so that you don't miss any of our other upcoming videos. You can also directly support our work and receive lots of fabulous perks by signing up to our Patreon for as little as one pound per month. Thank you so much for watching, and happy writing! <laughs>